Okay, so this is going to be my submission video for Electronic Superjoy Any Percent. But you know what? I am. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to turn myself down a little bit. I can hear myself progress. a little bit too much. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to be annotating a uh, a video, a PB video of mine uh, for electron Electronic Superjoy. Electronic Superjoy is a pretty simplistic platformer. Um, you really only have access to a couple things. Uh, you can jump, you can stomp. Uh, in some levels, you get power-ups like a double jump. Uh, but it's kind of interesting how it gives them to you because they're, uh, whenever it gives you a power, it also takes whichever one you had away. So you only ever have one at a time. Um, so... Yeah, so uh, one of the main things that you'll notice, I think it's coming up in, in the next level, uh, but you'll notice that I'm pretty much always running forward. And the reason why is because, uh, I mean, there's not a, a bunch of tricky movement here. So you kind of, the fastest way to complete the game is to just keep moving forward. Uh, and you've got a few tiny jumps there, not a big deal. The thing that you're going to see, uh, possibly not in this level, um, but in one of the upcoming ones is those flags right there are checkpoints. Uh, and one of the major, I guess, speed, I don't want to call it speed tech, but one of the major speed strategies uh, with this game is uh, whenever you interact with a checkpoint on a level like this, where you can see the level is scrolling with you, but maybe not as fast as you can go, uh, is sometimes you'll do a checkpoint reset. And what happens is whenever you restart from the checkpoint, it kind of centers the checkpoint on the screen. Um, and sometimes that's a quick way to advance the camera a little bit. Uh, but let's talk about <laughs> probably uh, other than the fact that the visuals and the music, which unfortunately you can't hear because I was talking in the video and I'd like to talk here. Uh, the visuals and the music are great, uh, but there's one reason, one great reason why I wanted to submit this. Uh, and you'll see it within the first eight minutes of the run. Um, and that reason is because the first boss that you fight in the game, spoilers, <laughs> it's going to be the Pope. <laughs> and uh, so this game doesn't take itself very seriously. Uh, and one of, the, one of the epic things about this Pope fight is that the Pope fires rainbow missiles at you. I thought that was such a, like such a funny irony um that i just i i had to submit it it just it it's kind of hilarious so um but anyways uh esj is a great game um and there's there's a lot of just like very pleasing platforming um it, it's all just it, it's pretty straightforward uh, but there's there's a lot of interesting stuff, like the gated uh, areas there where you hit the switch and it opens a gate so that you can go through. Um, these arrows that are sometimes stationary, sometimes moving, that you can bounce off of. Uh, and really just like a jamming soundtrack. Um, lots of great visuals. Uh, and the, the dialogue. <laughs> the, the dialogue and the bosses that you run into are all just really great uh it, it kind of it doesn't take itself seriously at all and that makes it a pretty fun thing to watch these little dudes uh you'll see them all over the game uh they're just kind of dancing to the music having a good time you know um but they also they talk to you they all have dialogue boxes one of my favorite ones is right here the hippie with the sign telling you don't go down there man and uh you know, obviously we're not going to heed his warning. We know there's a platform under there. Um, and I'm running forward here to hit the checkpoint. And here you'll see one of the first signs of me using a checkpoint reset. So you could see how slow the level was moving. There's another one coming up here too. Um, uh, right after these dudes. So you could see how slow the level was moving. And what I do is I land on it. And as soon as I hear the checkpoint trigger... I immediately checkpoint reset is one of the buttons bound to the controller. So, um, so I immediately trigger the checkpoint reset. There's another one, uh, and it moves the map forward a little bit. Uh, and there you you saw that you know the arrows. <laughs> once you bounce off of them, they go away. So you got to be careful because if you if you use the first ability that we have here, which is the stomp, um, which propels you down 
very quickly and also is an attack. If you use that too quickly, you'll actually hit the arrow, cause it to go away, and then stomp through it, which is what happened there. Uh, missiles tend to be one of the trickier, uh, one of the trickier hazards to deal with. Uh, they're a little scary to run away from sometimes, uh, but not typically a, a big deal. They just follow you around, uh, and there tends to be a lot of them in this game. Uh, you'll notice in the last stage there is just a volley of missiles coming at you, um, and all other crazy stuff happening. I, I, we'll we'll talk about that more when we get there. Um, but you you can see where the missiles maybe get a little harder to deal with on a level like this where the screen is scrolling very slowly and I can't move right to make it go m much faster. Uh, so I try to get to that warp as quickly as I can and I move through here. Again, same thing, trying to move through quickly. I actually use the checkpoint reset here to get rid of the missiles. Um, it just It just helps so that you're not kind of dodging those in between as well. And I do it there too. Um, so it's it's kind of, there, there are multiple purposes for those checkpoint resets. Um, but I hinted at something just a minute ago. So technically, if I stay closer to the right side of the screen, uh, what the game's going to do is uh, normally a lot of these side-to-side -side levels are, are sort of auto-scroller-ish. Uh, they move pretty good. They're not as slow as, as other games' auto-scrollers, uh, but they're still pretty slow. Um, and so what you can do is you can stay towards the right side and the game will try to move the screen a little faster. Uh, and that's a strategy in a few levels as well. So here, here is our first view of the Pope, the first boss in the game. Uh, <laughs> and one of his lines is censored. Um, so this game has two modes. It has a PG mode and a non-PG mode. Uh, the non-PG mode has the language in it, uh, and it also, every time you die or hit a checkpoint, it plays uh, a moan. <laughs> I it, There's not really a good way to explain it, so you might just have to uh, check it out for yourself. Um, but yeah, so this, this game... Um, it's interesting, but it has a non-PG mode. Uh, I typically don't play on that because the moans get a little weird and annoying. Um, but maybe that could be like a, a donation incentive. I don't mind playing it on non-PG mode, uh, but that does that does add a couple places where there are uh, language issues. So that's one thing to be aware of. Um, but yeah, so obviously first boss is the Pope. Uh, he wants to stomp us out for reasons. Now he's in a UFO and we have an accompanying ship to shoot him down from his UFO. Obviously, I mean, y'all probably saw that coming. Uh, and now we go to the final Pope fight. Uh, and what I did there was I did an immediate level reset because I'm actually doing a manipulation here. Um, so by doing the three stomps at the beginning and then a sequence of, of specific stomps, I can manipulate where the triggers for the rainbow missiles come. Uh, so I reset when I didn't get it, and then I got it second try. Uh, and I hit each of those rainbow missiles, uh, missile triggers. You can see one to the left of me there. Uh, and that ended up being a quick Pope fight. So he runs away. Uh, his spaceship crashed. And uh, he's, he's mad when we stomp him. That gets rid of the laser. And we're moving on to level two. Uh, <laughs> My favorite part of the end of this is the little guys saying, Hey, you destroyed the Pope. He's got a great hat. Who gets his hat? It's a pretty awesome hat. <laughs> so uh, so this is the second level. Um, and this is, honestly, this is probably the level that most people that run the game consider to be the hardest. Just because there's a variety of stuff to it. Like even in this first level, uh, there's a lot of early vertical movement. Um, very, very slow auto scrolling. These jumps here are fairly precise. You're actually jumping as you go off the edge there. Uh, and if you don't, you miss the jump. So they're, they're pretty precise. Uh, and then the very end of this level has a bunch of tiny blocks there. You can see them up at the top. Um, and it just tends to be like, it tends to be one of those levels that's like, okay, the Pope fight, 
usually not a big deal. This level, actually a little scary. Um, and I want to say World 2... Okay, so here's here's our uh, our first instance of another power, uh, and this is the double jump. So the double jump will let us cover a little more ground, lets us go a little higher vertically. Uh, it's it's good stuff, and this level uh, is another disliked level in runs, um, and it it's just because there's so much vertical stuff going on with no floors. So you, you basically have to climb this whole thing. You can't wall grab or anything. You have to use your double jumps and that sticky goo uh, to let you hold on to the walls there. Um, and you just got to scale this huge amount of vertical climbing. Um, it tends to be a lot of fun, but it's also it's very punishing if you miss stuff there. Um, the double jump does let me skip the, the last arrow there, so that's nice. Uh, and then this guy won't be much of a problem. But here we'll get an introduction to some of the lasers. And you'll see more lasers in uh, in later levels coming up. They are one-hit kills. So if you get hit by... You saw I, I respected the laser there. Because uh, if you get hit by the laser, you will die and go back to the last checkpoint. Um, so we use the safety spot here, uh, which blocks off the laser. I'm going to... I just barely did not get clipped. I thought I was going to die there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so we just make our way over, avoiding the lasers, and then we're out. And yeah, this level has no floor. Um, it's a little sketchy, but shouldn't be much to get through. Yeah. Um, and so this, this is another level that kind of emphasizes, um, just the, the added mobility that you get from the double jump. You'll see the checkpoint reset there again, pushing the map forward. Uh, and there's just a combination of things like I've got to I've got to dodge enemies. I got to watch out for spikes. There aren't very many platforms in between. Um, there are missiles in this level. There are spinning spike orbs there. Uh, the floor disappears when I'm running. Like this, <laughs> this is the first instance of a level that is just in insanely difficult compared to the previous ones. Uh, that. That uh, third platform there, uh, where I did just a split second jump there, that's a pretty hard jump to do. Um, but, I, I mean, it's not hard to get consistently. It's just very precise. Um, and then, yeah, we're just moving right along. You got to kind of measure your, uh, your jumps here to try to keep them within the spikes, but it's not too bad. Once you get a rhythm going, it's, it's no big deal. Uh, and then this level, they take away your powers entirely. So, uh, so checkpoint reset, and now we have faster missiles. Uh, so I go for a setup here where I can do the exact same series of jumps to avoid the missiles in a loop and jump over the guys, and I get on through. And that's that's quick movement there to get past the laser. Um, you you basically have to start the run and jump once you start the level. Uh, so that's that's a case where you could see some resets too, but not. Not a lot. It only takes one or two to get through there. So uh, you can technically run all the way through here without having any issue. Uh, but I play it a little safe because uh, I got nicked by a couple of the ninja stars there. Uh, and this one, you're just kind of going with the pattern of the lasers. At this next one, immediate checkpoint reset, and you can run through. It sets up the the pattern for you. So Stomp is back. Fuel's a good man. Uh, and yeah, we got some more some more missile stuff happening here. Um, so there's not really a set pattern for this one. You just kind of, if you stomp the first set and then loop around the other set, uh, you'll make it through, no issue. So uh, There you get to see that the Stomp pretty much goes through everything, including Spike Orbs. Uh, so that's a safe way for you to get through spike orbs there. And this is the first instance of the game teaching you that. Uh, but you can also use it for the ones that are rotating there. Um, and yeah, so pretty standard stuff. Uh, although those bugs that were walking along the ground, uh, whenever you land beside them, once they see you, they'll aggro. So a lot of times you'll see me land and then immediately jump back up to go ahead and stomp them just to get rid of them. 
Uh, and that was another case of me hanging by the right side of the level to try to get through it as quickly as possible. Uh, it serves two purposes. One, I know the warp is over there to get out of the level. And two, when I hang to the right, it makes the map move faster. Uh, again, pseudo auto scroller. So uh, this is all fairly precise uh, platforming. And I think after this, uh, after this level right here will be the rune level. Um, and there are some manips for this one too. Uh, there's a manip done in the world record run, uh, but there are also a few others, and you kind of just, a lot of times people just kind of pick what works for them, um, so you get used to a certain pattern uh, where the particular stomps that you do indicate where things will spawn, so it's another RNG manipulation thing. It's after this level, my bad. <laughs> uh, this one is interesting because it starts out as the the typical auto scroller then it starts speeding up to the point where you kind of have trouble keeping up with it um and you see here i'm just barely keeping ahead of the screen and if it catches up to me i mean i i lose i i fall off so uh so trying my best to keep ahead of it few short jumps here just to to dodge that laser and then we're good to go checkpoint reset gets rid of the enemies there will be enemies falling from the top there you see uh and we'll just go ahead and stomp through that one hit the next checkpoint here to do another reset we just kind of inch towards the right side there uh, and this is basically the end of the level so just a, a little bit more platforming to get on through um and again, uh, because I'm I'm talking over or I'm talking over my original run, um, you don't get to hear as much of the music, but definitely encourage you to hear the music. And you saw there, I just did three stomps in a row, uh, so that was part of a manipulation to make these runes that I have to collect ten of. Uh, it, it was to make those runes show up in a certain order that I could predict. Uh, so then it just makes it easier. And here. Uh, I just get to safety, so uh, yeah. So that that was that was not necessarily the the world record manip for that level, uh, but it's a very effective manip in that I knew where they would be, uh, and a series of single, double, or triple jumps uh, sets up the positioning there. So so yeah, here I'm being chased by a giant monster, and if he gets too close. He shoots lasers at me, and I'm pretty much sure to die. So I try to stay away from that. Uh, I I kind of bounce on these cats that have these lasers coming out of their backs. I don't know why, <laughs> but but uh, there there is a little bit of room for me to stomp on them there without getting hit by the laser uh, due to their hitbox. And I just got out of the way of the missiles there. Uh, another case where checkpoint reset and getting rid of the missiles is pretty handy. So we make use of that, uh, and we're just going to dodge the missiles here and do our best to get to that checkpoint, and then that's the end of the level. Uh, and surprise, surprise, the uh, the crazy mean monster that was following us finds another crazy mean monster and falls in love. So, uh, you know, a happy ending at the end of World 2. So this is World 3. Um, this is basically a hell level um, and a lot of it is intended to be a little more difficult than the rest of the game but I still think people find world 2 so unpredictable compared to the rest of them that it's still kind of considered the hardest one this one is just technique uh, and technique in this game isn't too terribly hard uh, there is there is a bit of an interesting point coming up um, in the next couple levels that we'll we'll talk about when we get to it it's it's kind of a unique thing among platformers so i like showing it off a little bit uh but yeah so uh we're making use of the stomp there to get through the spike balls again uh and we'll use that quite a bit there's a part coming up here where they're coming right at us and we can just go ahead and stomp right through them um and there are a couple more like that. So we are we paced a little bit there. Uh, we just missed the timing. Uh, but we, we took it a little slower there so that we could stomp through 
that one set of spikes and yeah we'll uh we'll do the same coming up uh there's another part coming up here where we'll have to do it so a lot of this is just getting the timing right to avoid all the moving stuff that can kill you uh, and you don't always want to stomp on arrows. There's a, a great example. It's funny that I mentioned that. <laughs> um, but you don't always want to stomp on the arrows uh, because sometimes you do just want a regular uh, jump off of the arrow. And when you stomp on the arrows, sometimes it, it affects your jump height. So um, It's also, I think it affects the arc as well. Uh, but that one, that, that wall... Uh, gives a lot of people trouble. Ooh, here's the level. Watch this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this level likes to turn um, 90 degrees right at a certain part, and then it corrects itself, uh, I think. <laughs> but it starts out normal. We go ahead and stomp through that laser. That is actually sort of precise. Um, okay, no, it doesn't correct itself. But uh, but that, that stomp through that laser is pretty precise. Um, so it takes a lot of practice. That's typically one of the last tricks that people learn for the game. Um, and I, there's not really much in the way of tech for the game. Uh, for this part, I kind of just try to leave some platforms in the middle there so that the lasers go under them while I get across. Uh, but in terms of tech for the game, it's, it's literally just small tricks like that. To, to just skip on through. Because if you didn't stomp through that, that laser that was going across horizontally, you would have to wait on it. And it does this auto-scrolling thing uh, where it just takes forever to go. And that's why you stomp through it, is so you can just fall down past it and not worry about waiting on it. Uh, and this, this is one of my favorite levels. It probably has the best music in the game. Uh, so I'm extra sad that you can't hear it right now. Uh, but don't worry, I can't hear it right now either. <laughs> so that makes me a little sad too. Um, but uh, this level is pretty straightforward. You just kind of move on through and there are a bunch of spike things waiting for you. Um, in on that particular star, I think if you stomp on that one, you miss. So, But on these, on these I like to stomp. Uh, it just kind of makes sense. And you just got to make sure that you arc over the moving ones there. And I'll stomp... I'll stomp through this last one. There we go. Uh, and that's another case of using it to be uh, invulnerable for a little bit. So that's pretty nice. So uh, this part should be leading up to the Groove Wizard levels. Um, so it's one of my favorite parts because everybody's saying groovy. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. So checkpoint reset, uh, the goo on the ground actually helps me speed up. So you remember from the previous level, the world two level, uh, the goo on the side of the walls helped me jump up the walls and it, it kind of, it seemed sticky. Well, that one is more, uh, it's more tuned towards speed. So you can see, even though I was standing still there, it was still pushing my character along. Um, and I can use it to propel myself faster. There's going to be a level later in World 3 that showcases that a lot. Uh, to, to the point where, <laughs> where uh, it's going to get a little wild. And it's so exhilarating to play too. Here it is. So yeah, so I just go ahead and move on through with the greatest of ease. Uh, these are a bunch of like little, uh, little and big jumps here. So they're not... Uh, one of the main things in these levels, and I guess the entire game, um, is this idea that that your jumps have different heights and arcs. And so you're not always just like jumping the same every time. A lot of times you're trying to move forward uh, and trying to, to jump variable distances. And here I'm trying to use the momentum from the platforms to get to where I can jump all the way over there because you can't make that jump without momentum. Uh, so that's that's one of the, the cooler levels there. Uh, and there's another one coming up that has a lot more stuff. And that's the first introduction. Here's the one coming up that I was referencing, by the way. It has a switch coming up here so I can get through the wall uh, and there will be a few more of those. Um, 
But the level that I just went through, which was kind of a, a precursor to this one, uh, it introduced the flight. So there are going to be a few levels here where flight ends up being a big part. Uh, so I hit those wings. And I actually can't slow down here because if I do, the wings will run out because they're on a time limit. Um, so if I hit the wings and the wings run out uh, before I get to the end, then I die. Yeah, I fall to my death. So uh, I, I can't slow down. I have to keep going there to keep my momentum and fly on through. Uh, and this is another level that's going to showcase some of the, the temporary wing stuff too. Um, <laughs> that, that jump is just a, a little punishing <laughs> because, um, it throws you forward with a lot of momentum. And then to make that jump, you actually have to drop your momentum. So, uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of a gotcha, but here you see, I'm, I'm keeping up my momentum, uh, my running momentum with that low arc. We're going to hit another set of wings here. Uh, and here it's not as bad. I just, I have to keep moving right. So I don't need the momentum as bad, but I I have to make sure that I don't stop moving right. And so that that means that I move in very specific patterns to cause the missiles to follow me up and then back down, uh, and that makes them run out. Just simple principle, instead of going left to right uh, with no impediment, if you make them go all the way up and then all the way back down and then back up again uh, and so on, then it, it wears out their time limit more. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to get ready to fight the Groove Wizard. Dun, dun, dun. And yeah, so this is the first instance of the final boss. Uh, and he has three phases. First phase, we have to stomp his heart. Um, and yeah, the missiles get a little crazy here. Actually, from this point on, the missiles get pretty wild so uh you're you're gonna see a lot of like tricky dodging and stuff um but i have to stomp this heart three times and for the first stomp i can wait on the ground uh which i do i i wait down there to go ahead and get the early hit on it um and then once i have that i start looping my way around the level and that gets me up to the top where i can stomp on it again um and sometimes it's sometimes it's a little tricky with these missiles to find a way through because they're they're circling around the level they're following you around like there I jumped between two missile trails that were very very close um, sometimes it's a little tricky but it usually doesn't take too many tries um, and even with even with like three or four tries on this boss uh, there's there's no concern like it's still you you can still very easily get uh get a 30 minute time on that so uh so they they call me neo because <laughs> you know <laughs> we ain't gonna get sued right um but yeah so this level has infinite flight and he likes to shoot missiles, but you'll notice there I did something very important. So usually you're in front of him when you play this game casually, and he's shooting shurikens at you, and he throws missiles at you, and all this stuff, and it's just like, oh my god, how am I going to dodge all this? Uh, but if you get behind him, he can't shoot the shurikens at you. Uh, he only shoots them forward. So if you keep up your momentum... Uh, then you can get behind him. And even from the checkpoint, it's possible to do it. Uh, you don't get behind him as easily. So you kind of have to dodge him a little bit and keep moving forward some, and then you'll be able to get behind him. Uh, but it's not a big deal. So we get through the, the level warp there. We knew it was coming up, so we lined up with it. And now uh, we could get behind him here, but it's actually, it tends to be a little easier to just do this this lazy circle that I'm doing here. Um, so we're going around in a circle, just timing it with the shurikens and the missiles. And don't worry, those were not the only missiles coming. <laughs> there are more missiles. And those aren't the only missiles coming either, because he's about to send out more. And more. And more. <laughs> and even more. And now it gets a little crazy where I have to start, like, 
I have to start leading the missiles in a certain way to where I can dodge them. And a lot of times I'll go up between two packs of them and then down between another pack like you saw there. Uh, and he does, I think, 8 to 10 uh, sets of these missiles. Um, and then once you finally last through all that, a uh, portal shows up right where I went to. I knew it was going to show up there. Uh, and then, yeah, this is the Groove Wizard. And apparently he stole our butt. So uh, if you ever wondered what this game's plot was, uh, <laughs> it's it's a little loose. Um, it's it's kind of not a, a stellar plot. Uh, but the storyline is that uh, your butt was stolen in a great war, and you are going to get it back buttless. Uh, so, all in all, it it is a great game. It's a fun game. It's a very, uh, it's a very brief game. Like even when you play it casually, it it shouldn't take more than like four or five hours tops. Uh, even if you're not great at platforming. Uh, but it's it's good fun. Uh, it's got great visuals. It's got great music. Um, it's got a little humor to it. So you know, there's there's some some fun to be had there, uh, and it's a lot of fun to play and a lot of fun to watch. Um, I know a lot of my viewers like to to watch when I do speed runs of it. So I thought I would uh, share that with you. Uh, but yeah, thank you for your consideration. Um, and yeah, just. Uh, I, I hope I get in. All right. Thanks.